We're looking at Manet's corner of the Café Concert at the National Gallery in London, and I'm just looking at all of those brush strokes on her apron, on the glass, on the counter where the man has his elbow. Or the instruments of the musician. Manet's really calling our attention to the brushes. Look at the wavy white lines that serve as her collar. And it's not just the sort of the chaos of the brushwork, the energy, the velocity of that brushwork, but it's also the wild composition and the space oh, that's being depicted. It's such a complicated image. Generally, you would think when a single person is taking up two-thirds of the canvas and looking at the pipe smoker with a blue smock, and then the large woman just in back of her, the waitress with the two beers, generally that would sort of settle a painting down compositionally, but not at all. <laughs> Here, she's leaning over. He's looking towards the dancer's just rather nonchalantly, his elbow really quite relaxed. She's in a very awkward position, which really suggests that there's a real movement taking place. And then her eye goes back, and it's completely confused for a moment. Right, she's doing two things at once. And it reminded me of our word of multitasking. <laughs> and true. so there's something so modern about this, of doing multiple things simultaneously, although I guess maybe there's nothing specifically modern about that Although idea. Although catching it visually, I think, is incredibly modern. That idea of the momentary as opposed to the staged. And of course, this is a painting that's composed to look uncomposed. This yes. is really actually carefully thought out. But what I was just noticing, too, as we're talking about the sort of discontinuity of things, you know, that he looks in one way, she looks in the other, her body moves one way, his body moves the other, is the way that all those forms in the background kind of elide with the foreground. So I was looking specifically at those white brush strokes that are right by his left wrist yes. that are actually part of her cuff of her dress. As she reaches around to pick up more beer. Because we don't, we don't see whole bodies. I mean, he's in a way violating a, like the, the basic academic idea of leaving the body whole and readable here. I think he's actually having fun with it, but he's catching little sort of windows of, of forms. For instance, look at the little U-shape that the bowl of, of the man's pipe, the stem of the pipe, and then his forefinger create, and caught in that bowl is the ear of the man beside him. Right. And so it's true. You've, he's, he's, he seems to be delighting in the absurdity of those kinds of junctures, visual yeah. junctures. Or the way that the gray smoke that rises up as a little plume from the pipe elides with the gray of the bowler hat behind. That's right. Or the way in which the instruments frame that bowler hat in the most absurdist way and clearly intentionally. And I think that, that by doing these things, Manet is doing something really wonderful that I think is one of the most important things that art can do, which is to make us more visually aware of the world that we live in and how unexpected things happen and how interesting they can be. Had art ever done that before? When we think about carefully composed paintings of the old masters, that painting is not drawing your attention to the veracity of life or the, ver the serendipity or of, of life. life. That's right. I mean, this is really anticipating our modern visual culture. It makes for an image that really still very much speaks to us. This is still our world. Yeah, walking into a bar, this would not be unexpected at all. This kind of bustle and chaos. It's no surprise that these galleries are among the most popular at the National Gallery. This is our life still.